Okay, folks, it's a moment of truth. We are we are mere hours away now from Tropical Storm Isaac, which everybody's desperately hoping becomes a hurricane. I can't believe this. They are desperately hoping that it becomes a hurricane. It's it's the Democrats' wet dream that this thing hit New Orleans. So, you know me, I my middle name is Solutions. I have some ideas for the Republicans on how to deal with the tropical storm slash hurricane hitting the oil. The first thing we do is offer to send 500 bus drivers to New Orleans, paid for by us, to make sure that the buses that were not used by the Democrat mayor during Hurricane Katrina will be used to evacuate people should it become necessary. The second thing that I think the Republicans ought to do is send bags of money instead of sand. Bags full of money to shore up the levees in New Orleans. This would accomplish many things. A, it would show our compassion. B, we could have Romney's five sons, who CNN last night asked, what's it like to be rich as sin or whatever? They did. Piers Morgan asked Romney's uh, filthy rich, stinking rich, what's it like to be stinking rich? So we have Romney's five sons deliver the bags of money to shore up the levees. Now, this will accomplish much. It will show our compassion. And it'll do something else. Once we publicize that we have sent 500 bags of money, well, whatever number of bags, bags filled with money to shore up the levees, what will happen? The poor of New Orleans will storm the levees and steal the bags, thereby putting themselves at risk for the eventual flooding that will happen once they remove the bags of money. And that way the Republicans can get rid of even more Democrats in Louisiana and shore up the state for themselves. How about those two ideas, folks? Am I not thinking or am I thinking? Great to have you here. EIB Network, L. Rushbow, 800 282 2882, the email address, L. Rushbow at EIBnet.com. Please stop sending me emails about Chris Matthews. I'm not going to play the Chris Matthews sound bites. I'm not going to get into it. We've got a ban on MSNBC. The ban is in force. Matthews went nuts yesterday. Uh, just accusing every Republican from the RNC chairman down to Newt Gingrich to being a racist for simply daring to even mention Obama's name. You can't even criticize Obama now, race. And, and of course, let me tell you what this is all about, folks. It's real simple. Chris Matthews is not lunatic. He's not crazy. He's not insane. And he's not losing his mind. There's a, well, I don't know about that, but there is a purpose to this. And the purpose behind this is to pressure the Republicans into not even mentioning Obama at the convention. Here the first time in many years that the nation will be focused on the politics of our country. And the Republicans go first with their convention. And the last thing in the world that the Democrats want is for the Republicans to talk about Obama and his record. Obama and the kind of guy he is. They don't want it meant they're trying to intimidate. All that was yesterday was an attempt to intimidate every speaker at the convention to modify the speech so as to not talk about Obama. It's a warning. You do it, and we're going to call you racists, and you know how you hate that, and you know how we can make it stick with our friends in the media. They know that Obama's the biggest liability they have going into this election. They are trying to intimidate the Republicans from the RNC chairman to Romney on down the list not to say a thing about him. And my fear is that it's going to work. To one degree or another. There's an AP story here today. This is, and, and, and oh... Yeah, this this uh, this rules change that everybody thinks got solved yesterday. Let me briefly, as I understand this, tell you what's going on. There was an attempt, the rules committee yesterday, to change the rules of the convention in determining who the delegates to the convention are from the various states. And to strip away all of the BS, the purpose of the rules change 
which was orchestrated by Ben Ginsburg, but you know, he's working for Romney, but he's the, it's, the, it's the establishment GOP. The express purpose is to eliminate any influence of Tea Party activists or grassroots people or conservatives, essentially, from having any power at future conventions. It would allow the presidential nominee to determine who the delegates to the convention are in future conventions. That was the purpose of the rules change. And as of last night, it was supposedly beaten back. Now, there is talk of an end run at 2 o'clock this afternoon. Brian York has a piece on it at the, uh, at the Washington Examiner. Despite reports of a compromise, there is still substantial unhappiness among many delegates to the convention over a package of party rules changes proposed by the Romney campaign. The fight could break into the open today as delegates debate various proposals to resolve the conflict. Now, the, the short version of the story is that the changes would give the party's presidential nominee more control over how individual states choose their delegates to go to the convention. Now, in this cycle, there have been a lot of fights in some states as Ron Paul supporters didn't win any primaries or caucuses tried to exploit local rules so that he could have some delegates on the floor at the convention and thus try to influence things that happened. If the proposed new rules had been in effect this year, for example, Romney, as the nominee, would have had significant control over the delegate selection process. And the latest is that while it was apparently beat back yesterday, they're trying again in an end run that's that's not ostensibly the, the same rules change that was being attempted yesterday. But the details here are not really important. The thing that we all need to know is why this is going on. And what the express per why the establishment wants control of the delegates. And folks, it's very simple. The establishment Republicans want to kick the conservatives out of the party. They don't want the conservatives having any say-so in the party whatsoever. And I'll give you one example why. It's an AP story. The Republican establishment will read this AP story rather than get mad at the AP. Rather than get fighting mad at the impugning of members of the Republican Party. Rather than get mad at that, they cower in fear and say, how can we make the AP stop writing this stuff? And they conclude that the only way to pull that off is to get rid of any conservative influence at all. And one way you can do that is keep them out of the convention and keep them out of the platform fights. So here's the AP story. The Republican Party that's showing its face to America this week is a restless institution that relies heavily on the uncompromising passion of Tea Partiers, anti-immigration activists, and social conservatives. In other words, let me translate this for you. Republican Party that's showing its face to America this week is a West restless bunch of white racists who hate Latinos, hate women, don't want any abortions, don't want any amnesty, don't want any immigration reform, and want old folks to die. Now, the Republican establishment will read this story, and rather than get livid at it, they'll say, we've got to get rid of these conservatives. They're, 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 they're killing us. That's what they say. That's why the effort to change the rules. The next paragraph of the AP story. These forces propelled the GOP to big wins in 2010. And they might even help Romney win the White House this fall, but they operate largely beyond his control. Sometimes igniting brush fires and pulling his campaign off message. Even more troubling for the Republican Party in future elections is that these fiery conservatives seem to be turning off many Hispanic voters, the fastest-growing segment of the American electorate. 
The challenge facing GOP leaders as they hold their nominating convention to look to the future. Trying to win elections and push their agenda through Congress by harnessing the energy of these conservatives without letting that energy turn on them. And without letting it put the party badly out of step with a nation that's rapidly becoming less white. And so you see, according to the AP, when you boil it all down, the biggest problem with the Republican Party is its whiteness. They are racist, anti-women, anti-Hispanic, and damn it, they're the reason the Republicans win. And so we got to get rid of them. The AP wants us gone. The Democrat Party wants us gone. And the Republican establishment doesn't want the hassle of dealing with this. In Romney, the convention goers in Tampa are nominating a former corporate executive who fits somewhat uneasily in the party's decades-long rightward shift, which manifests itself most clearly in Congress. Republican lawmakers' adamant opposition to tax increases, even on the wealthiest families, writes the AP, puts them at odds with most Americans. You see, most Americans want to raise taxes on themselves and on their grandparents and on everybody else, including the rich. But these white conservatives want the government to have less money and be smaller and don't want any Democrats around. And so these white conservatives are the problem. And they've got to go. They've just got to go. This isn't about Ron Paul, much as the media would like you to think it is. It's not about Ron Paul. It's not about his delegates. It's about the establishment finally being at its wit's end over this war on women. Rather than try to rebuke it, they want to try to stop it. One thing I learned, and you know, people ask me all the time, how do you put up with all criticism and all the, the lies that people tell you about this? Well, it was tough at first because I thought I could stop it. And somehow, I don't know, I learned I can't stop it. So it has to be beaten back and defeated. It, but you can't stop. The Republican establishment had better figure out they can't stop this stuff. Even if they were able to cleanse the party of all these white conservatives. You think the AP is going to start writing love stories about you? You think the AP is all of a sudden going to love you? The only way that's going to happen is if you become perpetual minority losers. And then they'll love you like crazy. As long as you accept your role. Minority, constant losers. We'll give you a couple pieces of legislation here and there. The days of Bob Michael in the House when the Republicans had 135 members. You get back to that and we'll love you again. That's really what this is about. Much more problematic is the Republican Party's strained relationship with minorities especially a fast-growing Hispanic population alarmed by the sometimes sharp tone of conservatives on illegal immigrants. The party may need to address that problem before long to avoid falling behind Democrats in key states. They were winning everything, though. See, that's the problem. The 2010 elections, the midterms, were a landslide loss for the Democrats and the left. And this election could be, and should be, a landslide loss for the Democrats. But with stories like this, attempted rules changes such as those yesterday, Chris Matthews going nuts, you can see what's happening here. The full arsenal of the left, including the media, is doing everything it can to intimidate everybody at this convention into shutting up about Obama, about the Democrat Party, about its policies, about the things that it has done that are ruining the country. Just shut up. Otherwise, you're going to pay a price like you haven't seen. We're going to make this country hate everyone. You may win, but we're going to make everybody hate you and think you are the most despicable enemy this country's ever had. 
And when the party's not made up of a lot of fighters, I, how many times have I told you the story? Early 90s, in the Hamptons. Dinner party, mostly establishment Republicans. A major figure, you'd know the names. Big donors, fundraisers. Come up to me, point their finger in my chest, actually jab my chest. What are you going to do about the Christians? What do you mean, what am I going to do? It's abortion. It's killing us. We're never going to win a damn thing. They listen to you. you got to get them to shut up about this. I said, there are only 24 million votes. You can't win anything without them. We don't want them. It's not. It's embarrassing. Well, that's 1992, 93. We're now at 2012. It's 20 years. That's how long it's it's, it's been building. That that is something that existed then. It existed during the 80s with Reagan. There was embarrassment over Reagan. By the way, I got sound bites coming up on Reagan, what he did at his convention in 1980. I'll show you how it's done. We'll show you how you talk about a failed president. We'll show you how you talk about an abject failure who is your opponent in the White House. But I must take a brief, obscene profit break now. We'll be back and continue after this. Don't go away. (laughs) 